What is going on guys and girls welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 Game of Thrones during the Andal invasion where we play as the house Sunderland of the sisters. Now I want to use the first episode or the first part of this episode today to address some of the comments that you've made over the last couple of episodes. Uh, specifically I want to talk about the custom houses uh, the, the custom house suggestions that you have submitted. But before we get into any specifics, I want to quickly say something general about my upload schedule or my recording schedule, just so that you know what is going on. Because ideally, I would like to record one episode per day so that I can and upload one episode per day, obviously, so that I can include your feedback from the comment section almost instantly, right? So whenever you say something in episode 11, I get to include that in episode 12. That's the ideal way, right? Unfortunately, that's not reality, right? I've, I'm a university student and I also have a job. In fact, right now I actually have two jobs that I'm working uh, at the same time. And so I'm quite busy because I've got obviously all kinds of other responsibilities a regular person has as well. And so um, it's it's very difficult to have like a regular upload schedule. And the only way I can really do this is if I record in, in bulk, right? So what that means is that, for example, Saturdays or Sundays as today, I've got time to, you know, I've got a couple hours to, to record. And so what I do is I sit down and record several episodes in a row, right? And so what that means is, I might be able to actually get out one episode per day, but uh, it means that I can't really re like reply to your comments. I mean, I can reply on YouTube, but like if you suggest something, I can't incorporate it into the series in a timely manner, right? So I just wanna I just wanna say here that I'm not ignoring you, or you know, I think your advice is stupid. Quite the contrary, I would love to do that. In fact, there's a couple things I will actually, or I have uh, decided to do now. Uh, it just takes some time. Just just be mindful of that. Specifically with the custom characters, I know you guys, you know, are eager to have some of them in the series, but uh, yeah, it just it just takes some time. But today, I actually got some of your characters, most of your characters in. Uh, I, as I said, I think I got yeah most of your suggestions in when it made you know sense when it, when it fit. Um, some of them, some some people, for example, suggested several houses or characters. I only chose one of yours, which I felt was like the the best or that fit the best um, in this particular scenario. So yeah, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to show you. Actually, no, that's not true. I want to say one more general thing about the houses. I have basically just changed the last name of the house, the family name, and I have uh, changed the sigils. I did not really, like, I didn't do anything else. I didn't add any claims or uh, treasury artifacts or I didn't change the appearance or the first names or anything, mostly because that requires me to go into the save files, right? And that's a huge amount of work. That's exponentially more work than just using console commands to uh, switch to a character and customize uh, their their uh, family, right? So this is very easy for me to do. I can do this w without much hassle. Um, anything that goes beyond that is a lot of work, and that is the kind of work I reserve for Patreon supporters only. So uh, yeah, I know a lot of you had some really great and elaborate background stories about you know this and this person. Um, so I hope that it's not too bad that you know sometimes your characters will have a different first name right? And maybe look differently and have some different traits. It's just kind of the way it is. But yeah, uh, without further ado now, let's actually get into the custom houses I've included. Um, and yeah, I'm basically just going to show you the house. I will show the name, the sigil, and name the house words when they were mentioned. So the first one we have is House Breakwater over here. And you can see the sigil. It's supposed to be the water that clashes against the mountain. I know this doesn't look entirely like like it should, um, but that was the best I could do. I was hoping I could go for something like the house upcliff, but I wasn't able to do that. So this is the best I could come up with. House Breakwater of Sunrise Keep, and their words are where the sea, where, where the mountains and seas meet. So I feel like this is actually a really good spot for them. They were initially supposed to be the ones to uh, the house that united the veil but we know that this one died out and uh, was replaced by house hunter so i gave them just a different spot but they're still here and they still have a chance i mean it's very unlikely but they could still uh, take the veil if they wanted to uh, then we have got house white wall 
of Martlet Bay over here. They're also Andals and following the faith of the seven. And uh, they do not have, actually, do they have a house? Yes, they do. Their house words are we're the shields. They didn't have a, uh, they did not have a coat of arms specified. So I just went with a white wall on a black background. Yeah, there we go. That's house white wall for you. Then uh, who else is next? We have got house. Oh, this is an interesting one. House whim. Uh, this is interesting because it's the only house that's following the old gods instead of the Faith of the Seven. And uh, yeah, House Wim of Etranta, they have a red bird on a black, uh, on a yellow background. And their house words are, oh, let me find it, Revere the Ancient. Right, so they had a whole background story about how they were uh, kings of the god's eye or... The, the green uh, something? I'm I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, by the way, obviously, your background stories are all over the place. Like, some of them are in episode 1, some of them are episode 8, 12, 14. So, what I suggest, if your, if your custom house has appeared in this, in this episode, maybe just uh, put a small little summary comment uh, below this episode, just so for, for people to know what your ho house is all about. Because you'll be able to explain it much better than I will. Um, so yeah, anyway, but we've got House Wim here. They have some claims in the area. They were driven out uh, initially, but uh, now they're back. And perhaps they're going to become kings again. Who who knows? Yeah, another house that is already king is House Levi, Levi Galashields, which is actually two houses combined into one, which is kind of interesting. They have got a yellow arrow or golden arrow. I think it was a golden arrow, right? Over a blue field. There you go. And uh, they're obviously also Fave the Seven, Andals. And they're interesting because they have a, a female heir, Lady Janika of Rosby. And um, she's got several dead kids. And uh, currently, however, the Lord Paramount is matrilineally married to the Lady of House Rosby. So this is interesting. They might lose these lands. I didn't, like, change any of this. As I said, I just changed, uh, you know, the, the name and the sigil. So we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens here. But for now, they've conquered this and they've brought with them their faith uh, and culture. We'll see how things develop. Uh, then we have got House Stormdrake over here in Mistwood. They are Andal and Favor the Seven. They've got a blue dragon on a black background. And their house words are We Bring the Storm. And I think I've forgotten to mention the house words of. House Levi Gala Shields. Their house words are brothers of fate, but they also have another common saying for every man a journey and every brave soul an adventure. And in case I haven't mentioned, I think I forgot the house words of House Wim as well. Apologize. I also, I'm also sick. This is another thing I need to mention. Yes, I'm sick and so on and so forth. So please bear with me here. House Wim, House Wim's house words are revere the ancient. And this all plays back into their uh, background story as well. Um, yeah, so there we are. Um, right, and there's one house. There's two houses left. I did just mention how Stormdrake, we are the Storm. They are actually of somewhat Valyrian ancestry, I believe. So I place him in the Stormlands, also because of the house words. And because obviously this is actually part of Valyria now as we know. Uh, but yeah, then we've got two more houses in Dawn. We've got House Gold Raven over here. They've got a Golden Raven on black. That's uh, simple enough. They are the rulers of the Red March, but they've just lost to Gaston Grey here, to a peasant rebel. And uh, then we have the house words. They are not mentioned, actually. The house words are not mentioned, okay? And then we've got, lastly, but not least, we have got House Corret of the elbow. Their sigil is an eclipsing sun blazing against a black sky. So this is what I this is what I did. I think that looks pretty good, and it does fit Dawn in a way too. Um, obviously, Fave the Seven, obviously Andal. They're the ones who managed to convert House Dane with their slow, uh, <laughs> slow sister or whatever daughter. Actually, it's her daughter. All right. Anyway. Um, and um, their words are sharpen your spear. 
Right. All right. So those are all the custom houses that I've included here. Um, so again, let me know something, a little bit something about your house in the comment section. Um, now that you know the exact location where you are, maybe you can come up with a little bit more of a background story as well or slightly adjust your story. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that was that for now. And uh, now I want to address a couple of other uh, comments you guys have made. First of all, I know there are people from Sunderland. So apparently this is a city in England watching the series. So <laughs> greetings to you, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, also, yeah, one thing that people have mentioned, I feel like I need to address this as well, is that uh, we had a lot of deaths uh, over the Grey Plague. Uh, actually, mm, it doesn't show. Oh, there we go. So, for, for example, Ethan, yeah, our actual heir died with Grey Plague. And people, like, were going crazy in the comment section going, hey, you should have closed uh, the gates. And yes, I guess I should have. But um, you should also remember that we were at war. And when you close the gates, all your commanders vanish. Like, they, I mean, they stay behind the walls. And the thing is, the thing I've experienced, maybe this was a bug previously, I don't know. But... When I did this, uh, the AI, when I then opened my gates again, sometimes my commanders, my AI commanders, would not actually come back out of hiding. They would actually still uh, stay secluded in that court. And that means even though, like, maybe the uh, disease has left or whatever, they just wouldn't come back and I wouldn't have any commanders to lead my armies and that's terrible while you're at war so that's why I didn't do that maybe that wasn't the right choice just so you guys know my reasoning here but yeah uh, other than that um, one other thing I really really appreciated was how you guys uh, yeah kind of picked up on the relationship between Dennis the black and uh, his friend Lionel. It doesn't actually show right now, but it's actually really cool because Lionel's, this is Sir Lionel right here, he was a friend of Dennis, our father, and now his son Ronald is a friend of us. So um, yeah, that's really cool. And you actually suggested that I should raise Lionel to nobility. I never did that because I, it didn't occur to me. And obviously, as I said, I pre-recorded all of these episodes. So now it's too late, but we have the chance to do the same thing with Ronald. Now, I actually use console commands here. Um, I, as I said, I always tell you when I use console commands for something. But in this case, I felt like it was a good idea because Ronald, he left for the Citadel because, well, he wanted to become a maester or whatever. Um, but now I've realized that the AI actually wants to get married. So to me, this is enough of a... Um, this is enough of a... Oh, I... I I don't know. I don't know the word right now. That's kind of annoying, but um, I guess enough evidence or whatever that this person actually would want to come to my court. I couldn't invite him to court. It's just impossible. Like the game prevents you from in inviting someone uh, from the Citadel personally. So I had to use console commands, but yeah, he's back now. He loves us. Obviously, he's our friend. He wants to be married. And so what we're going to do is we're going to raise him to nobility right now, as we should have done with Sir Lionel, right? And um, so now he has a new yeah, flag, a new name. I'm going to be changing that. And again, you guys can leave some suggestions uh, for uh, Ronald's house, for Ronald's new house. And um, yeah, he also wants to get married and we're going to find him someone. This is our concubine. I'm not going give to him, give him that one. But Lenora, she's a bastard, but uh, she is... Following the Lady of the Waves religion, she's shrewd. She seems interesting. She is a noble bastard. I feel like this fits a noble bastard from the sisters um, with some upjumped, I guess, uh, Fave the Seven follower. I feel like this kind of fits, you know? Nothing too fancy. Not a, not, a, not a wife that's too, I guess, high up socially, but nothing terrible either, right? Not a peasant. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, Ronald, uh, he's a brilliant commander, mountain expert, siege leader. He's a squire, which he'll probably stay because there's no more kings, uh, I mean, no more knights around. Lionel was the only knight we had. Authoritative, gregarious, just, and a craven, interestingly. So, I guess the idea here is that, like, he has got an iron link, um, signifying that he has acquired enough knowledge of Warcraft to be considered an acolyte. He's actually currently an acolyte, uh in the um, in the citadel society right here um so basically what that means to me is that ronald he has a lot of like war knowledge 
but theoretical knowledge, right? He's learned that, but he's never actually fought. So that's the idea I have. Um, so yeah, that's Ronald. And now he's going to get married off. And, uh, well, we'll, um, we'll probably appoint him as a commander. Let me see if I can do that. Because I want him, despite him being craven, I want him to get some practical knowledge as well. And he does have a lot of marshals, so. I mean, way more than all of our other commanders, actually. So, yeah. We're going to go take him on some reaving. Probably not on this one, but on the next. And actually, we're not going to be reaving. I mean to actually declare war to expand because this is something a lot of you people have said as well that okay there's a ton of raiding going on but uh, no actual conquering and that's something that we'll be doing um so yeah uh, we're gonna go for gold town because they're currently very weak they've just lost a war they've got basically no defenders and uh, so we're gonna be taking them out also because gold town is a holy site for the Lady of the Waves religion. So that's another good reason. And I mean to make Ronald's house uh, the rulers of Goltan once we successfully capture that. But uh, so far that hasn't uh, that hasn't happened. Okay. Let me quickly check if there's something else I've missed. Right. There actually is something else. Um, you guys have also mentioned, or I've actually requested suggestions for our house words. And some of you have come up with some really cool ideas. I just want to mention... A couple of them. Uh, one was Beyond Waves and Tides, obviously mentioning the Blade of the Waves religion. Then we've got Beware the Bloody Tide, also sort of in relation to that. And we've got Bound by Iron and Blood. Now, all three of those I've just mentioned, I've actually decided not to use. I like them. They're cool. Uh, they, have their, they have their place, certainly. Um, but I felt like they were either a little too on the nose when it comes to like waves and, and tides and stuff like that, or they were more fit for like Ironborn. Um, and so I've decided to go with a different one. And I just want to show them to you right now. Um, so now I'm not sure. Is this where I put them? House words? I'm actually unsure, but uh, I guess I guess here. Well, anyways, the house words I've decided to go with are we suffer no others. Now, I like this for two reasons. First of all, it kind of explains our independence, right? Our, or the, our, I guess, wish for independence, our fierce, uh, yeah, defense of our own independence. But it also goes a little bit further because what I did was I actually changed uh, the word slightly. It was actually, we suffer no others like that. And I've changed it to a cup, capital O because in my mind, um, this was somewhat developed during the long night and maybe the others came and wrecked havoc on, on the sisters or whatever. I don't specifically know. It's, it's all in dark, right? But potentially the words were initially just against the white walkers, against the others. But over time, we kind of forgot about that, and we just take those words as, as what it means. Like, we suffer no others. No others than the sister men, for example. And this is why we're so fiercely independent, right? Uh, because of our house words. And uh, yeah, I feel like this is just kind of a cool background story to House Sunderland, because their words were not mentioned uh, ever in the series. But yeah, uh, one other suggestion was that uh, we could rename the sword... Uh, the, uh, uh, the sword lady forlorn and there was a really cool name suggestion the waves weaver and i i really like that and i might actually change uh the the sword but i'm not going to do it right now because at the moment raymond raymond the young is still alive he is married to our sister and so for as long as we have like this very close connection to house corbury uh where we actually have a person well, the, the former lord who has who's following our religion, I feel like it would be a great insult to rename their sword. I mean, we've already taken it, stolen it from them, and so on and so forth, but renaming it is something that is very disrespectful, and I think I wouldn't do that right now. I, I might do it later, but not at this point. All right, so I think that's basically addressing all of your comments and uh, now one more thing i want to do i know we haven't actually moved forward at all today i i know this is this is crazy but yeah one other thing i want to mention is that several 
notable houses have actually converted to the faith of the seven. Now, we already know of the Danes uh, who have converted thanks to House Korat. And then we also know that House Hunter has converted. But by the way, not all of them. Just their current lord, the heir, is still following the old god. So, you know, this is still not uh, entirely decided over here. But there's other houses as well. We've got um, House Shat that has converted because of the Graftons. We've got House Rusby uh, that has converted. There's another uh, man of House Rusby who has also converted to the favor of the Seven. So, you know... That is interesting because uh, because of Levi Galashiel's uh, attack. But there's other houses that have converted too. So, for example, we've got the Dondarians, who are Fave the Seven worshippers. And, this is super, super strange, House Blackwood. Of all the houses to convert, House Blackwood is probably the biggest surprise. Specifically because House Bracken is still following the old gods. So, this is a really cool and interesting situation there. Uh, other houses that have converted, other Cannon houses, obviously, that have converted our House Piper here in the Riverlands. They have converted to the Faith of the Seven. And House Mutant has converted to the Faith of the Seven. As well as House Will over here in, in Dawn. And then House Ratford has converted as well. And House Royce has converted. Actually, well, a part of House Royce has converted. Um, not the main branch though. So still, that's kind of interesting. Um, and yeah, I'll try and keep an eye on all the uh, cannon houses that convert or that pop up. Uh, but yeah, so that was that. I hopefully addressed all of your comments. And um, yeah, I guess <laughs> next episode, we're going to be actually moving forward in time. We're going to finish our raid here. We're going to return home, raise our men, and we'll attack Ghoul Town. Thanks for watching. I hope you've got I hope you have enjoyed <laughs> and I'll see you next time.